Bradford pear is bad. An early spring drive just about anywhere in the eastern U.S. will quickly show why it is past time for the Bradford pear to be forgotten as a landscape tree. In this video, I will cover three great native alternatives to the Bradford pear that not only look good, but are a hit with pollinators and wildlife. I'm going to save a super versatile species for last, so be sure to stick around for that. Kicking this list off is Mexican plum, Prunus mexicana, a beautiful native fruit tree with a range centered in the south central states. The white to pink blooms of Mexican plum appear early, from February to April, and are attractive to a wide range of pollinators, with native bees and honeybees being the main source of pollination. Mexican plum is self-fertile, so fruit will be produced even if only one tree is planted. The small plums start off greenish yellow and transition to pinkish and then to purple when ripe. Fruits are on the tree from July until September or until the critters eat them. Many species of birds and mammals feed on the plums, which are also edible and can be eaten raw or used to make preserves and jelly. Mexican plum normally grows as a single trunked tree that can reach 10 to 35 feet in height with up to a 20 to 25 foot spread but it is often on the smaller end of this size range. It does well in a variety of dry to moist, well-drained soils and will grow in full sun to partial shade, but the best flowering and fruiting will occur in full sun. In addition to being great for bees of all kinds, Mexican plum is also a host plant for up to 340 species, including the striking Cecropia moth, and the genus Prunus is considered the second most important keystone tree group in Eastern North America. If you love native trees and want to replace every Bradford pear with one, please pollinate that like button. Next up is the alternate leaved dogwood, Cornus alternifolia, which has a large range throughout eastern North America. It can grow from 15 to 25 feet tall with a 20 to 30 foot spread and can be grown as a large shrub or as a small tree with horizontal layered branches. This is where its other common name of pagoda dogwood comes from. Alternate leaved dogwood is the latest blooming tree on this list, and the round clusters of small white flowers bloom from May to June. Clusters of blue-black fruits, which are a hit with the birds and small mammals, form in July and August and can persist into the winter, where they add interest along with the good fall color of the leaves. Alternate leaved dogwood is a great choice when four season interest is needed. It prefers rich, moist, well-drained soils and can grow in full sun to part shade, but does better with a little shade, especially in the southern part of its range. The dogwoods are considered another keystone tree group and are host plants for around 98 species, including the small but beautiful spring azure butterfly. In addition, there are four species of pollen specialist mining bees that only feed on dogwood pollen. All three of the trees I'm discussing today are in keystone tree groups for Eastern North America. There are several other species in these groups that are just as good in the landscape and for pollinators and wildlife. I plan to do specific videos on each group in the near future, much like I did for the goldenrods and joe pie weeds. Which group would you like to see a video done for first? The plums, the dogwoods, or the service berries? Let me know down in the comments. Now for a tree that is super adaptable, beautiful, and produces edible fruits. The common service berry, Amelanchier arborea, which has a range that covers a good portion of eastern North America. Its eye-catching, bright white flowers bloom in six to eight inch spikes at the ends of the branches during March and April and are replaced with red to purple fruits from May through August. Critters of all kinds are drawn to the fruits, which are also edible and quite tasty and can be eaten raw or made into jelly. Common service berry is self-fertile, so a single tree will still produce berries, when it comes to growing conditions, it is not picky and will grow in full sun to part shade in a wide variety of moist, well-drained soils, but temporarily wet or dry soils will not hurt it. Common service berry usually grows as a multi-trunk small tree, but if more root suckers are allowed to form, it will take on a shrubby shape. Under most conditions, it will grow 15 to 25 feet tall with a 15 to 25 foot spread. This is another pollinator powerhouse that also makes the keystone list with around 92 species using it as a host plant, including the always nice to see red spotted purple butterfly. There is a lot to like about serviceberry and it is one of my favorite small native trees. If this video got you thinking about native trees and shrubs for your landscape, be sure to check out this video 
on trees and shrubs that'll bloom during the heat of summer and get out and explore nature in your backyard.